Well, it's time now for our regular Sunday trip into the kitchen with Patrick's Pantry. And today, the recipe is for a rather special South African dish. Hello, everybody, and a warm welcome to the very first pantry of the new year. Hope you enjoyed all the traditional Christmas fare over the last couple of weeks. And tonight, I thought, just for a change, we'd go right down to the southern hemisphere, down to South Africa, for a dish which is tasty, nourishing, delicious, and economical, and it goes by the name of Bobote. Now, on the hob here in my pan, we've got about ooh, a tablespoon of oil and an ounce and a half of butter, just melting there gently together. And to those now, I'm going to add two onions which have been peeled and sliced there, as you can see, into half circles, and then we let them cook over a moderate, gentle heat there for about five or six minutes until they're nice and soft and shiny in the usual sort of way. There we are now, absolute perfection. They'll have given up some of their lovely sweetness there, the onions, and reduced down a little as well. Now, here's some curry powder. The strength is entirely up to yourself, but a generous tablespoon of that, there it is. This is a mild one, in fact. And also, you want a teaspoon of turmeric, very traditional in this dish, to have a good helping of turmeric. Gives a lovely yellow colour. So those two spices now we just take simply and stir into our onions. There we are, stir it in. Lovely stuff, and we let those cook there, warm up and give up some of their lovely spicy flavours for just about a minute or so. Now, this dish is designed for about four people, and for that you need about a pound of minced meat. You can use any mince you like, really. You could use beef, you could use venison even, or as I've got here today, you could use minced lamb. As I say, about a pound of minced lamb would be ideal for this dish. Now, the thing to do is you've let the onions cook there with the spices for about a minute. Wonderful aroma coming up to you. Pick up the meat, uh, save the pasta for later, and we're going to add this now to the pan with the onions. In we go, in, in, in small amounts. And, of course, the obvious thing we do, as you add the meat in these small amounts, just like this, break it down. As it's minced, it's quite well behaved. The thing now is to let it cook there, breaking it down as you do so with the onions. And this will probably take about five minutes, as you could imagine. Nice high heat. Now you can turn the heat up a bit. And the objective here, of course, is to thoroughly brown the meat on all sides. And there's just one other ingredient I'm going to pop in here for the moment, and that's a tablespoon of vinegar. There it goes. I'll just guess that from the bottle. It's a very dark... It's, this is balsamic vinegar. Very dark vinegar. Costs a bit more. Well worth the extra, I always think. A lovely vinegar indeed. But any vinegar you happen to have will do. Right, this should take, as I say, about five or six minutes. There we are now, all beautifully brown, as you can see. And now I'm going to add... This actually was a thick slice of crustless white bread which I soaked in a little milk, a tablespoon or two, and let it absorb the milk, and then I squeezed it very dry, and now I'm adding this squeezed-out bread to the mixture. This actually, simple little thing to do, but it makes quite a big difference, actually, to the texture of the finished dish. Same applies, of course, when you're making hamburgers. OK, lovely. Now, this recipe calls for two fresh tomatoes to be peeled, if you like, and chopped up. But, of course, at this time of the year, tomatoes really aren't at their best. And my personal recommendation to you is to get yourself a small tin of chopped tomatoes, or indeed half a large one. That'll do fine. And we'll add those now. Here they are, full of sunshine. We'll add these now to the mixture. There we go. Right, little quick stir around. And now here come lots of lovely flavour makers. First we have a bay leaf. Tuck it in there to the centre. Cover it up if you like. And also now something a little fruity. A couple of tablespoons of sultanas. If you haven't got sultanas, well then raisins will be fine by me. Uh, here's a tablespoonful of flaked almonds. Hopefully you'll have some of these ingredients left in the store cupboard after all the Christmas celebrations. Good. And now something which of course is very popular with curry and also worth adding as you make it. And that's a good generous tablespoonful of mango. Mango. There we are, mango chutney. Lovely, right into the middle. A little salt, of course, I would say half a teaspoon. You can always adjust this later to taste. That's the salt. And to sharpen up the flavour now, here's two tablespoonfuls of freshly squeezed, I squeezed them only minutes ago, lemon juice, smashing, and now a little more liquid. And that's about a quarter pint of water. And in that water, I have dissolved one chicken stock cube. Right, we bring all this to the boil and let it simmer away gently for about 15 minutes. Now, while everything there is simmering away beautifully, get yourself organised. You'll need a, a suitable-sized uh, oven-proof dish, like the one in the centre there. And all you have to do is just brush that with a little melted butter. Uh, you'll also need a lemon, which has been peeled and sliced. And you'll need half a pint of milk with a little salt and pepper and two whole eggs. Right now, our meat has had its 15 minutes, so we transfer it straight into our buttered oven-proof dish. That's lovely. Just level it out on the top. And then we gently pour on our fresh milk and eggs mixture with a little 
seasoning, of course, which is made all the more simple by using a jug. And now we can arrange in an attractive looking circle on the top our slices of lemon. And last but certainly not least in the flavour department, here's two fresh green bay leaves. And then it's straight into the oven at 180, 350 gas mark 4 for about half an hour. While that's cooking away there, well then of course you can get ready your accompaniments. A um, little salad would be nice and perhaps a sweet sort of chutney of some kind. And of course you need some rice and I recommend basmati rice for this. That's the prince of rices fed by the waters of the Himalayas and it's absolutely a lovely fragrant rice and ideal for this sort of dish. And here's the main feature itself with all that lovely fruity and lightly spicy flavour. A touch of freshly chopped parsley of course completes our beautiful boboti. And that completes this week's recipe. Hope to see you next week. Until then, from me, once again, to you, a very good night.